before eventually going cold unsolved for more than 20 years. Tonight, NBC10 IT reporter Tamara Sakarzik takes us inside the investigation into the murder of Hanizaki. The house was entered, the house was left, and one bullet to his head in his bedroom, and there was nothing else. The sound of sirens echo across Prospect Street in Providence. It's April 10th, 2001. Dr. Hanizaki is found dead in his bedroom, a bullet wound to the back of his head. He was targeted. The case immediately dominated the headlines. The mystery of it captivated the community, something Providence Police Major David LePayton remembers well. He was a doctor, he was killed at home, he was murdered. It's, it's, you know, it's interesting to the public. But over 20 years later, the questions of who killed the doctor and why remain a mystery. It is still wide open for us. Hanizaki was a well-known ear, nose, and throat doctor with his own practice in Johnston. Dr. William O'Connor joined him in 1999 after being drawn in by his professionalism and empathy. Very friendly, uh, very gregarious, um, very generous, and willing to do anything for anybody. There were a few known occasions where somebody he thought needed to go to the emergency room and he drove them himself. What does that tell you about his character as a doctor? Unusual. Very unusual. He was also known as a family man. Zaki lived with his wife Deborah and their two young kids in a wealthy neighborhood in Providence. Could you think of any reason at the time that somebody would have wanted to kill him? No. No, could not. Not initially, because I was too shocked by the fact that it had happened. But as time went on, there were several possibilities raised. One of those possibilities, a patient with a grudge. Zaki had several malpractice lawsuits against him. Was it a disgruntled patient? That's always a possibility. There were other rumors that he had debts that he didn't pay and that the mafia killed him. Former New England mob boss Raymond Patriarca Jr. was one of his patients and good friends. Zaki also co-owned a trading business with Patriarca's former business partner, Frank Zamiello. The doctor also had family trouble, which became the center of this case. Witnesses told police he had abused his wife and the two had recently spoken to divorce attorneys. She was brought in for questioning. Did you kill your husband? Absolutely not. In an interview with the late I-team chief, Jim Terracani, Zaki's wife, Deborah spoke about being a suspect in her husband's death. But there was somebody else in the room directing her not to answer certain questions. Did you love your husband? No. Oh. Oh, okay, well, just, that's fine. Nothing about the abuse either? Right. Nothing at all? Without, even without naming names or anything like that? I mean, no. no. Oh, okay. Court documents reveal Deborah would have gotten a one-time alimony payment of $75,000 upon divorce, and her husband would have had full custody of the kids. While that certainly raised suspicions, Deborah was never charged. Hi, Deborah. This is Tamara from NBC10. I tracked Deborah down again to talk about her husband's death. She now lives in Florida. She initially agreed to an interview, then canceled through a text message, blaming potential flooding at the time. Multiple text messages and calls since have gone unanswered. Has the wife been ruled out as a suspect? Um, no one has been ruled out as a suspect. Has his wife cooperated with police? Yeah, I'm not going to answer anything on that. While Deborah may have been the focus of the initial investigation, O'Connor believes she's been treated unfairly, targeted for simply being the wife. But I did not believe the spouse did it. I just don't, didn't believe it then, don't believe it now. The case remains cold for now, but police believe the suspect is still out there. With today's technology, LaPayton says it's only a matter of time before it heats up again. This case has not been put down. It's always picked up. It's always looked at. Hani Zaki was 51 years old when he was killed. His practice eventually folded after remaining up and running for a couple of years under Dr. O'Connor. His family now lives in Florida, far away from the nightmare they left behind in Rhode Island. For the NBC Tonight team, I'm Tamara Sikarczyk.